Conventional term and whole life insurance policies are simply not the best way to replace government insurance programs or the military pension protection program called the survivor benefit plan that's automatically wrapped into your pension. For those who want to avoid those costs and avoid those fixed systems that don't give you any flexibility and control, whole life or term insurance are often offered as the obvious replacement. However, as I'll show you in this video, they don't solve the problem and I'll show you what you should be doing instead. Welcome back. I'm Scott Tucker, the founder of US Vet Wealth and the creator of the Unconventional Military Retirement Blueprint, where we teach you the pragmatic financial approach to achieving autonomy and work-life balance in post-military life or life after your military retirement. Okay, so getting on to today's video about conventional life insurance, specifically what are term and or whole life insurance. So uh, let's take a look at this chart real quick and just talk through what are the main points of what happens when you get a private or a, 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 an individualized life insurance. Because as we talked about in the other video, the SGLI, the VGLI, and the survivor benefit plan are technically all group type of policies. Everybody pay paying the same thing. So conventional life insurance is just the standard stuff you've heard about. If you've heard about it at all, I'm assuming you have, if you're watching these videos that have been around for decades, honestly, for over a hundred years in some capacity, this traditional life insurance has been around. So as we understand term is like renting when you rent a home or an apartment, you're doing that typically because it's a lower cost, but you're not going to be getting any sort of return on investment. There's not any sort of equity in it. Uh, you're just living in it. And when the lease is up, you leave. That's it. You don't get any more value back. You might get a little bit back as in your deposit or something like that. So that's what's happened with term insurance. We're renting. Basically, it's catastrophic insurance, just like uh, it has terms. The term happens to be a time frame based on an individual life. And so that's how it's typically structured. You just need term to cover certain periods of time for certain events. And, and that can be true if um, we're only looking at it from a, a just-in-case scenario. It has a role to play in offering large amounts of death benefit when you need it for very first specific reasons for an understanding of a cost involved. And it's just straight up insurance. No different than car insurance. Homeowners owners insurance, you don't get in a wreck, your home doesn't burn down, you, you don't get anything back. So that's understandable that it's sunken cost. Uh, unfortunately, that's exactly what's happening with the government insurance is uh, folks just don't realize it. Again, if the, you don't get in the car wreck, you don't have a, a reason to make a claim. Uh, that's basically the only time you'd have an action or result from term insurance. Again, a, a negative outcome. So what's whole life permanent? right? The whole of your life. So permanent insurance, uh, of course, requires different mechanics. The, the cost, because because if it's for the whole of your life, the insurance company can't know how long you're going to live. They got a pretty good guess. That's what the underwriting is about. But it's not enough of a guess for them to price it into how they design the policies. Term life's well, way easier for that because they know it's a very low probability you're going to die within the term. So since it's just catastrophic, it's a less than 2% chance that anything catastrophic happens. And honestly, this is even for those on active duty going down range. It's not a very high probability. So it's therefore very cheap. A whole life, we know that the probability question is off the table. It's for the whole of the life. It's, it's intended to be there when you're no longer there, no matter when that might occur. So that requires more skin in the game, uh, just like buying a house uh, that you want to live in, having a mortgage on it. Up front, there's more property taxes. There's just more maintenance. You get the title guy. There's just there's more pieces involved, and it causes ever, uh, extra layers, extra stress, extra commitment over longer periods of time. And, and the other thing with whole life, unlike with term life, term life, you do more underwriting, but traditional, conventional whole life policies they're really, yes, they're going to do some medical underwriting to make sure that you're at least healthy enough to qualify for insurance. But beyond a tobacco versus a non-tobacco rating, there aren't a whole lot of options 
for offering good health. It's just not priced into the mechanic of your policy or of the way whole life insurance work. Like uh, when you buy your own home, the property taxes are just the property taxes. And, and if the value of the home goes up, you're going to have to pay higher property taxes, even if you already paid the mortgage. Off. And so that's what happens inside whole life. Your cost of insurance as you get older is always going up. So we're basing it off of there being equity building inside the policy that you can use to help pay it off. Technically, there's equity that you can access, but much like a home equity loan on, on your house, if you, if you wanted to tap into the equity of your house, say you've lived in a, your home, you've been paying your mortgage for 10, 20 years, and there's maybe been some property value gain. And so you've got a lot of equity you could potentially access, but can you go up to it with an ATM card? No, you literally have to go to the bank and apply for a new loan to access your own equity. And that's actually what happens inside of a whole life insurance policy that isn't explained very well. To access it, you have to pay a loan feature. And oftentimes those loan costs are around you know, 8%. And since the growth rate on whole life policies are a declared dividend. This is sold as an advantage. We've priced it into our policy. We're going to declare a 5% declared dividend every year. And that's true. It's nice to have a guaranteed growth rate of 5%. But what's actually happening? Whole life insurance are mutually owned policies. The definition of that means you're a part owner of the insurance company by being a policy owner. So it's almost like being a stockholder. You're invested technically in the policy. So where is the company getting its profits from its shareholders or its policy owners who are, who are purchasing the policies? So when they're declaring a dividend, that's, that's priced out of the profits of the company. So in many ways, it's a rebate. It's a rebate of profits they gain from you participating in this mutually beneficial structure because guess what you get out of it? You get a guarantee of a large death benefit for whenever, again, the coverage never ends. So whenever your demise, as long as you've funded it and there's enough equity in there, you'll have something available to you. So why is this a problem then with replacing the government insurances or any or doing any sort of higher net worth or higher income or multi-income stream post-military insurance strategy coverage because this isn't a strategy these are just policies you, just like a mutual fund i'm just got this one i got that one and what we're saying is it, at U.S. Fed Wealth, we're talking about, well, hey, if you're coming to us, it's typically because you're, you've got something unconventional going on or didn't feel right. And if we're looking to replace the survivor benefit plan as one primary example that we often see a lot, let, let's take a look at what happens there and why the term and the whole life might not be a good fit. So um, here's our, our 05 timeline straight out of the guide. I mean, just to extrapolate the numbers for whatever rank and time of service you might be. But for an 05, uh, getting out at around 20 years, they're making around 151000 I just had a call with a guy this morning, and that's what his total military compensation could be. But you can go to the DFAS website or the government calculator website and look up total military compensation to input kind of what is your current lifestyle? That's important to know. If you haven't done that, if you're only bake it, ba basing it off of what you're getting on your LES, look at it from an annual perspective so that you can truly see, all right, what am I worth right now? So that when I'm trying to look at my civilian pay, or what I'm looking to get, that's what I want to replace. Uh, Post-military income, are, are you just trying to meet the gap or do you want to re replace what you your pay was worth? A lot of people are just, trying to replace the gap between whatever their pension and their VA disability is going to be. But when you are going to the uh, transition assistance programs, and they're talking about the value, be focused on the, the value that you want to replace. And frankly, the goal should be double this number, double the, the amount. Because in the civilian world, the options to, to get to a $300,000 income, there's more of them. It, you have to be a general to even get close to that in the military. So just just the fact that it's available more often means it's a possible goal. So why not just double it? And then if we start lower and, and are working towards it, that's fine. So uh, you'll notice here at the bottom of each of these, I said alive. Yeah, this, these are the incomes you're going to get when you're alive in some capacity, some combination of all this. And if something happens to you, this is what happens. Okay. And that is the only scenario in which a survivor benefit plan, of course, gets paid out. So what does this have to do with the, the, the whole life and the term life insurance policy? Because 
with the survivor benefit plan, it only covers that small amount. And so the unconventional approach here is to replace the full amount or closer to it or whatever amount you want and have access to it if you don't die. Have a return on investment if you don't have an early death. This is the survivor benefit plan is about the just in case early death, make sure there's a stream of income. So if we want to cover closer to the full amounts, either for legacy or just to make sure we're placing income or just because that's what, what your worth is, it actually doesn't require necessarily more cost. It doesn't require necessarily more investment. In some cases, it doesn't require anything new at all if you're just using a repositioning of asset strategy. We'll talk about that stuff in other videos. So term life and whole life can't do this. They, they can't do the replacement. Unfortunately, uh, they just can't because this requires there's a much larger death benefit. For a longer time, the equivalent death benefit, lump sum death benefit of the survivor benefit plan payment is you know, only around a little more than 500000 to, to a million dollars. And that's not going to you know, go very far. It seems like a lot. I know SGLI and VGLI at 400000 definitely aren't going to go very far. Uh, but even a million will only replace the value uh, of the survivor benefit plan. So if you want to cover closer to the full amount and, and be more cognizant of costs of inflation and increases or other values of assets that you're going to be increasing in the future, then a larger death benefits uh, going to do benefit you better because of the estate planning and tax benefits that it might help you with later on. And then if you don't need it later on, uh, you can, of course, reduce it. But either way, whatever insurance amount, death benefit amounts you purchase when you start to replace any of these things is, is what you're locked into. It's very difficult to increase a, a death benefit coverage later on. So it's better to start high and then reduce it later on if it turns out you don't need it. So you don't have that option with any of the government programs. And while you do have it with traditional term insurance, the term runs out. We don't know when death is going to happen. And most likely it's going to happen after the term. There are only 20, 30 year policies at that. And the probability of something happened in those extra 10 years between a 20 and 30 year policy isn't that much higher. But even just in cheap term insurance, the cost doubles between a 20 and 30 year policy. So all things to consider, also sunken costs, no different than the survivor benefit plan. That's why term just simply. Uh, it is not a high enough uh, probability to give you a return on investment. And while whole life can guarantee a return on investment, just like a uh, owning property, yes, you could get at the equity, uh, cumbersome and, and not really what it's designed for. It's meant to, to guarantee, again, that the coverage never ends. But to do that, you just cannot get enough house. You, you can't buy enough because of the, the commitment and the costs involved to keep a high death benefit. But it's done well for some who have built some equity in it. And now the opportunity is to actually transfer some equity over into a more modern policy. So what's a modern uh, life insurance policy or, or what we call the private a pension insurance strategy or private pension system, really. We're, we're, we're doing more of a design of life insurance versus just buying a policy. And, and what's the difference here? The cost versus the benefit is the way that life insurance is typically bought and sold or any type of insurance. What's the benefit I'm going to get? How much is it going to cost me? And that seems logical, of course. But when we upgrade uh, what we're doing, of course, using the new technology that's available uh, in the insurance marketplace today, it's better to look at this from the perspective of what's the probability that I'm going to get a return on investment, living or dead? Because uh, in other videos, we've talked about the probability of the survivor benefit plan and uh, with the term and whole life insurance. We know the probability of term is very low. We know the probability of whole life is very high, but the benefit uh, cannot be that, that high versus how we look at the O side of things. I want to guarantee a high probability of a return on investment. So let's do the, de the design that way. So in the guide, you've probably seen this chart 
And I'll explain it just in a little more detail. This is where we're saying, hey, this isn't about cost of death benefit, because if we got SBP here in the middle as the status quo, so it's sitting there where we are banking everything off of that, where the other government things sit on here, SGLI's low cost, there would be no return on investment unless something happened to you. And VGLI, it's just the fact that the cost goes up over time. And of course, once you stop paying for it, then there is no return on investment. So the higher probability scenario for both of these is that nothing happens to you. And so any money that would in whatsoever uh, means uh, you're not getting anything back. But with the term and, uh, and whole life insurance, uh, now we've got some different flexibility, right? That's what the private marketplace offers. So over here in the lower right, uh, we can get a great return on investment if something happens because it's low cost. So it's much bigger potential death benefits for even lower costs sometimes than VGLI or SGLI, just depending on how you qualify. And then whole life, of course, much better uh, probability of getting a return on investment. It, it just can't, it can't be that much. And what we're doing is introducing something up here in the top right box uh, where it's okay, let's just, just be a little bit more strategic at how we design this. I use the new technology that makes it more efficient. It's just upgrades in, in, in the types of insurance policies, the types of term insurance, and the types of permanent insurance that are available. And so that's basically what we do at U.S. Fet Wealth. When you uh, sign up for our pension protection system, uh, we walk you through how to get access uh, to the tools uh, the tactics and the techniques that will maximize your pension, be able to keep uh, your pension. What would have gone for payment for SBP, that stays in your pocket for your military retirement and ultimately can give you access to, to a lot more bells and whistles, features and benefits, right? Ultimately, you want to know that the years you've put in to your military service to earn the pension are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. And when you find out about the survivor benefit plan and the cost of VGLI, it's a little confusing. It seems like it's wrapped into the system. Yes, you have choices, uh, but it's hard to explain what am I paying for? What am I missing out on? And so that's what we're looking to do for you here, because we can see here the SBP only really has one scenario of what you get paid, but it does have the benefit of, of being there as a guarantee for the lifetime. Okay. We just don't know what the, when that when those scenarios are going to play out, but you don't get any money back. Uh, VGLI, of course, is just an extension of the SGLI uh, term we, and we've talked about in the whole life. Uh, of course, we get a little bit more benefits, get some equity. Now, the newer technology is the universal life insurance policies, and there's lots of different kinds of universal policies. So what they offer are more flexibility in how you fund it, how you can access the equity, uh, how you can adjust the death benefits. So what we're doing in the military pension protection system is to not just replace the survivor benefit plan, but add more of a liquidity component, a tax management, really a pension duplication system. That way, if you stick around a long time, we can duplicate your pension by withdrawing some of the equity. If something uh, does happen to you, we're duplicating your pension fully, not just the 55%. And, and you can adjust uh, all those amounts and costs evolved and your access as you go, and even add some disability of replacement component, whether it's your VA disability or a long-term care type of insurance a program that would typically cost extra money, whether you're getting it through the government or a private marketplace that, uh, frankly, is not efficient at all. Disability insurance has not been priced well in this industry. And so with our program within the life insurance strategy, you actually get that built in. It's no extra cost. Just none of that is available with any of the other programs. And so um, a lot more to talk about there. We'll get to that in other videos. But that is the main reasons that uh, whole life insurance uh, will not solve the problem. The good news is if you do have whole life insurance with cash value in them, they can be used to jumpstart the pension protection system with U.S. Vet Wealth. No penalty, no taxes to do something like that. So make sure that you visit our website, usvetwealth.com, and sign up for the blueprint. We'll go over your situation briefly to figure out what are the best resources you should start with to see if 
the uh, U.S. Vet Wealth Pension Protection System will be a better SBP replacement system for you. If at the end of the day, the best thing for you is to just get some low cost term, we have access to the full marketplace of all the insurance carriers. So we can get that taken care of for you. And specifically, since we focus only on military retirees, we know uh, the unique medical conditions that a lot of you are facing, especially sleep apnea, uh, comes up a lot. Many of the VA disability claims are not as detrimental as you think they might be. And of course, we've got relationships with specific underwriters to help mitigate uh, those concerns as well. That's what we do inside the Military Retirement Blueprint. I hope to see you inside. See you on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I'm Scott Tucker, founder of US Vet Wealth and the creator of the Unconventional Military Retirement Blueprint. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you check out our other videos and visit our website, usvetwealth.com where we teach you the pragmatic financial approach to achieving autonomy and post-military work-life balance faster. I look forward to seeing you.